Day five of Ultimate Adventure, and we are on the Mogollon Rim, at probably one of the best campsites in all of Arizona. After another long day on the trail, we made it into camp a little after 10 p.m. last night. As a result, everyone's moving a little slow this morning. Driver's meeting! All right, welcome to day five of UA. We got some road miles to cover today. We're going to the cinders, then we're going to our campsite. So Trent's gonna explain the route, what we have in store. We need to kind of make up some time. So those of you that didn't air up last night, uh, go ahead and air up. We're gonna have some road miles today. Uh, we are gonna be headed north and we are going to the cinders, which is kind of like a dune area, but it's solid black because it's all volcanic rock. The Cinders OHV area is located just outside of Flagstaff, about 85 miles away. We're going to be on dirt for a little while this morning on the Mogollon Rim, then we're going to hop on 87 for a bit to Lake Mary Road, which is going to take us all the way to Flagstaff. We're driving down the road and we had a little wobble, and so we pulled over to check it out. There's a little clunk when we push back and forth in the tire. I'm not sure if in the unit bearing or track bar, so we're gonna jack it up and try to see what's loose and double check all our wheel lug nuts and everything. Today is as good as it gets. It's nice and cool, all the trucks are happy, gorgeous scenery, we actually have trees and shade, which deserts and cactus are pretty scenic and awesome also. But this is really nice, this is comfortable. The Voodoo Off-Road Rugged Radios Off-Road Design Falcon Tire Power Products Skyjacker Warren Winch Dana Axel at Magellan Cummins Jeep was doing great out there, but the front end started to get a little bit of wobble coming into the corners hot. We found that there was a track bar that needed adjusted, but we got that tightened up and we will be passing people on the rest of this road. All right guys, we're gonna be changing the route a little bit. We're the entire trip was planned out and then pre-run while mapping it on a Magellan TRX-7. Go to this waypoint, hit go, and it'll- Knowing that we had some 250 miles to our destination, it was necessary to make a more direct route to the cinders than originally planned in order to give us a fighting chance of making it into camp before midnight. This is a bit embarrassing, actually. So we got rolling about four miles later, this thing sputtered and died. Now I am holding the entire group up while I put fuel in the thing that I could have done 10 minutes ago. After a quick stop in Flagstaff for some desperately needed fuel, it was onto the Cinder Hills OHV area. Think dunes with volcanic ash instead of sand. Now this is the first day in the past several where we've had everyone back with the group after the various breakdowns and repairs. This is good because the Cinders offers a completely different off-road experience. It's similar to sand, but it's different. And it's a lot harder on parts. So be aware of that. And tires. We explored a little bit as a group, then basically turned everyone loose for a few hours to explore on their own. Located at the foot of the San Francisco peaks, the cinders are the remnants of the significant volcanic activity in the region. The 13,500-acre OHV area is one of the few in Arizona where open riding is permitted, meaning you can pretty much go wherever you want and don't have to stick to an established route, though still, running over foliage is prohibited. If it weren't for the trees, you'd think we'd been transported to the moon. We are out at the Cinders OHV area. It's basically, as you can see, it's just a big pile of uh, volcanic pumice. So it's just like a bunch of little pebbles. So it should be some pretty interesting wheeling. There's some big hills, kind of dune-like. So we're going to go out, see how high we can get up them. San Gilles' buggy is powered by an all-aluminum LS1. So the lightweight rig really didn't have any trouble with the steep hills. Wheeling on the cinders is sort of like being in the dunes, except with steeper hills. It has to do with the angle of repose of sand versus ash. Dry sand hills reach a maximum angle of about 34 degrees, but these hills of ash can reach upwards of 40 degrees. Come up on the left of us here, After four around. days of poking around on the rocks, it was nice to have a place to open up the throttle and get some wheel speed going. Damon's Ford-powered Scout 80 also seemed right at home thanks to a suspension that soaks up the bumps and plenty of power on tap.
I've done some stuff at Pismo a bunch, kind of close to my home, so I'm used to the sand, used to this kind of stuff, but this will be interesting because I'm sure it'll be slightly different. So uh, I'm getting excited and ready to, uh, ready to get out there and see what it's like. Meanwhile, Cooper has discovered that the problem of the mysterious rotating front end on the diesel power product's ram is much more serious than just loose cam bolts. The center of the front differential housing has been spinning on the axle tubes and causing serious driveline problems, among other things. Now, Cooper has the truck tied off to two trees, and the plan is to get the pinion to rotate back upwards so that the center can be re-welded to the tubes. Big truck, big dude, big axles, one tiny ball-peen hammer. Chris Durham's Gladiator JK looks unique, but underneath the unusual nose is typical Durham. Simple, strong, and effective. And then again, a clapped out old car running on just two cylinders could make it up these hills with Chris behind the wheel. The perfect gearing allows the stone stock 3.8 under the hood to get the JK to the top without issue. 65 horse bar can do it. Kind of like sand dunes, um, never wheeled in this type of terrain before. Keith Bailey's Magellan CJ7 really isn't built for the dunes, but the thirsty small block Chevy under the hood manages to get the job done. Note co-pilot Steve taking video with the Magellan TRX-7. Some used horsepower, but Fred decided on a different approach and used the torque of the Cummins R2.8 to get tube sock up the grades. Certainly an impressive technique, if not terribly exciting. It's hard to say which had the better exhaust gun the Watson's K30, or the 6.4 liter Hemi in the Skyjacker JK. Regardless, it had no trouble in the cinders. The distinctive whine coming from the Voodoo Rope CJ10 gives away the fact that the JK Source 3.6 liter under the hood is packing heat in the form of a Sprintec supercharger. Now, this combination has no problem propelling the unique lightweight rig. Everyone had a great time at the cinders, and even better, no one managed to break anything. But with more than six hours to go before camp tonight, it was time to gather up the troops and get rolling. Aired back up, it was back to the blacktop to knock down some miles before dark. Well, maybe this section of road will be uneventful for a change? Well, it appears. The the thermostat's not open because the radiator's just ice cold with the motor showing it's overheating. So we're gonna try to pull the thermostat out right quick. Try to see if the thermostat's even open. I think. Well, it ain't open, but I think it'll flow around it. Hope we get to get to cool off a little bit. Heading due north through Cameron and Bitter Springs on Highway 89, the group turned west after passing through Marble Canyon. In all, we would log 150 miles in 14 hours before making it to our group campsite for the night in Jacob Lake. Drivers meeting. We're being quiet for the neighbors. Let's go. This is the Rick Bayway special. What do we fire up all our engines and that'll be a lot better. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to day six of the Ultimate Adventure 2017. Yeah. Uh, I think we're at, what, 7,300 feet elevation? Uh, I think it's 8,000. 8,000. Great campsite, uh, great route. We got an even better one today. Who knows what's really close by? <coughs> the Grand Canyon. And that is where we are headed this morning. This leg is not too bad. This leg is like 100 and, I want to say about 120 miles. The next leg is a legit 180. 
and much of it is in low range. Please have every drop of fuel that you can carry on you. When people talk about the Grand Canyon, most of the time they're talking about the easier to access South Rim. Our route was taking us to the North Rim, which is more remote and receives less traffic as a result. When you're this close to one of the natural wonders of the world, you simply have to stop and check it out, even if it meant nearly a four hour detour from our ultimate destination. The drive to the North Rim from Jacob Lake also happens to be one of the most beautiful in all of Arizona. The scenery at the North Rim is even more breathtaking than the South, and it's certainly more rugged. Multiple scenic overlooks are just a short hike from the historic Grand Canyon Lodge, which is worth seeing all by itself. This year's Ultimate Adventure got to go to one of the highlights of America. Uh, this is America's favorite hole in the ground, the Grand Canyon. Um, the Grand Canyon was formed about 60 million years ago, much around the same time Fred Perry started growing a beard. Um, this is really cool. If you've never been to the Grand Canyon, you should pack your bag and hop in your 4x4 and drive out here. This is an icon of America. And there's actually two sides of the Grand Canyon. There's the North Rim, which we're on right now, which closes down in the winter. And there's the South Rim, which I think is open year round. And uh, Fred, you got anything, any words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, if you, uh, you don't get any perspective on this until you see the sightseeing plane fly through the bottom and then you realize how large a hole this is in the ground. America's favorite hole in the ground, the Grand Canyon. Go check yeah. it out. Well, we had a Griswold look at the Grand Canyon. We're all set up. We've got a lot of miles to go, so we're gonna load up and head out, and there's some dirt coming up soon. Leaving the North Rim behind, the group probably thought that this was the last of the Grand Canyon they would see for this trip, but they were in for surprise. Not far up the highway, we took a shortcut to save some time on, you guessed it, a dirt road and also saw some pretty cool stuff along the way. After gassing up at Pipe Spring and making sure every gas can was as full as it could be, it was back to the dirt for the longest leg of the entire trip. Well, we are airing down for the last really long stretch of trail road day combination, or at least 120 miles, which in Ultimate Adventure time could be two hours, it could be six. Trent's got some more dirt roads planned for us, so we're uh, getting ready to get the dust mask back on and hit the trail. We have uh, some good dirt miles, it's a little bit warm out, and it's going to be a little bit dusty. This Ultimate Adventure, we've been having a pretty good struggle with mechanical issues, everything from a transmission cooler leak to a fuel line leak, a brake line leak. So we've kind of had our hands full stayed on top of repairs a little bit and, and keeping the motor from getting too hot. We were having that issue too, so we had to wire our fan direct to keep that going, but I think we have it all under control. We'll see. Well, since we've been in dirt for the last four or five days, 160, 70, 80 miles of dirt probably won't be nothing, but as you can see by looking at the roll of vehicles, I'm next to the last, so I'll get my fair share of dirt. So I'm gonna try to keep a little distance anyway. He's doing great. It's great being tail end. You can just sit here and mop up all the problems that the other people have. What's really cool is on this trip, even though I used to lead it, I don't know where we're going, so it's, it's really coming back. All I know is that it's 100 miles that way, 100 miles that way to get to where we're supposed to be going. This isn't the right way, so this is gonna be great. Hurricane Utah is our destination for the evening, and it's northwest of where we are right now. But we are headed due south, roughly towards Toro Reef, before eventually turning west towards Mount Trumbull. Now this route is going to take us right through the heart of the Arizona Strip, one of the most remote places in all of the United States. Most of the normal ways in and out of this area involve going to Utah, Nevada, or California. Of course, our route is far from home. Mount Trumbull is a tiny little settlement, and its most notable landmark is the Mount Trumbull Schoolhouse. Now, this is a well cared for recreation of the original building. Inside are displays depicting the history of the area and the settlers in it. The schoolhouse is a historic building, so we were sure to leave it exactly as we found it while we explored. I think we got a little dusty today. We had 32 miles, oh, I mean, three to two miles, two to three miles of dirt. And uh, we'll eat as much as we can since we got to see the Grand Canyon today. I'm 
trying not to be that guy. You know that guy that holds the group up. <laughs> and I would say if you showed up with Ultimate Venture this year without goggles, you're sorry. You're sorry. You're you're very very much regretting yeah. that right now. Yeah. Because they're a requirement this year for yeah, sure. For sure. One thing is for sure, we are well off the beaten path, as no tour bus would ever go near where we've been or where we're going. From Mount Trumbull, we are headed due south, past the Bar 10 Ranch, and to the Whitmore Overlook, one of the most remote vistas of the Grand Canyon that is accessible by vehicle. Whitmore Overlook is also the site of where an ancient lava flow once dammed the Grand Canyon. The path to the overlook follows this flow, so it's rough and extremely bumpy, but totally worth it. How many people get to see two distinctly different vantages of the Grand Canyon in one day, especially one this remote? One of the advantages of vehicles like this is that we can get to remote destinations to see these majestic views like we have behind us here. It's a view that very few people ever get to see. It's a little bit of work, but we can get there and it's worth it. All right, well, it's been a long, dusty day, but here we are at the Whitmore Overlook. We, uh, we came in via Mount Trumbull. This is a 25 mile one way uh, in and out, but as you can see, we're at the beautiful Grand Canyon, the Colorado River's right down there. Uh, everybody did great. We made great time down here. We're checking it out, but we're not done yet. We actually have to still get to Hurricane and the hotel for a badly needed shower. So we're gonna get it rolling and head to Hurricane. The sun's going down, but there's another 85 miles of dirt between us and the hotel for the night, so it looks like we're going to be doing some night viewing. Well, it was another long day, but seeing the Grand Canyon was a bucket list item for many in the group. There's one more day of Ultimate Adventure yet to go, and we've saved some of the best and hardest wheeling for last.